Hello and welcome. Today we've got this Milwaukee Fuel SDS brushless rotary hammer. It's going sometimes, but sometimes it stops going. You may not be the battery. It's got the typical wobbly battery syndrome, but that's not what's causing the problem. I suspect it's broken wire. I don't think the terminals are too badly damaged there. All we can do is open it and check. Right, with the cover off, we have the job of looking for the brake here. There'll be something to do with this. There's a loose way already. I think we've got it. We've got lucky here. Hold on to show you. See that white wire? That white wire has become completely detached. So it'll be just a matter of reattaching that. And we should be good to go. That's what's causing the issue. I fear. Take the resin on that and I'm just melting that off so we can clean this hopefully and get a, get a good solid attachment. That's a small layer. It's probably enough there. That's attached now, so hopefully that'll hopefully that'll do the business for us here. Just gonna put it back together. That's all the screws on now. It's time for the moment of truth to see if that fix has worked. I'm going to slam on the battery and give it a go. Yeah, I'm calling that fix. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about something that's prevalent in battery repair called the jump start method. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't do it on a battery like this, which will be a prime candidate normally. This battery is shown on the voltmeter, 10 volts, roughly speaking. 
yep and if we take the top off we're ready to get the screws for speed we can see what it's shown across the the cells 1 1.8 1.8 1.8 1.8 I think as well and 1.8 so we're getting equal voltage across the cells but they just it's a terminally low amount of voltage across the battery so they're equal to each other however it's far far too low so normally I would say jump start this battery the reason I'm saying I'm not to do it is it can heat up the cells and cause cell failure there's a much much better way to do it and I'm going to show you now instead of doing the jump start I recommend using this item it's a programmable DC power supply and this power supply is able to bring up the voltage of this battery without overloading the cells without heating them up that they'll end up failing so you can see here the plus and minus plus minus so we can click Clip the plus on here. I'll put it up that way, maybe if it helps you see better. And put the minus on here. And I've already set the board to uh, 17.2 and set the amps. Well, the amps could be lower, you know. I'll set them to 2, I'll not just go completely mad. You can go down as far as 1 amp if you want, you know. 1 amp will be even more cautious but I'm going to put two amps through it and I'm just going to bring the voltage up I'm going to measure the voltage of that battery coming up with this voltmeter just to show you and I'm going to press the button now and watch the voltmeter that's connected up to the battery you see it's going up right away and as soon as that battery reaches 17 volts we're going to get off the charge and try it in the charger it takes longer than the jump start method but it's like I say it's much safer you see it's coming up to 13.4 it's not going to take very long at all so I'm going to pause the video and then we'll start up again when I get to 17 volts right here we are now we've got up to 17 volts and we can sort of we'll remove the voltmeter first we don't need that um, to get away Supply. We'll just remove the power supply now. I'll just stop her. And remove this. Put her off. Put the lid on that. And try it on the charger. There we are. We're charging. Leave that on a little while to see what happens, but I'm pretty confident we'll have a fantastic job. If you have a battery that's not charging, and I've identified low voltage as the issue below, below anything below 15, and if you check the banks of cells and they're all even, that means bringing it up with a power supply is a possibility, even they're very low. Most people rec jumps, recommend jump start, but however, I recommend jump starting the battery. However, that's good in a pinch if you're out on site or in the field somewhere just doing what you have to do. You need to get a battery going, you haven't time. But if you have access to a workshop and a power supply, this is what you should be doing. As you can see, this is up to two bars already. So we'll have to leave it on a bit longer and see what happens. Here we are, we've got the four bars now. That's what we're waiting on. And we'll try her on two to see if she goes. perfect so if you're doing the jump start okay but if you have an option of using a DC power supply like this I'm going to put a link in the description and probably in the pinned comments this is the way to go this is the way to bring back your battery safely and will prolong the life of them so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and check out the channel for all my other videos